Welcome back guys. In this video, we're gonna give the GT a full service. Okay, so the package has arrived in. Let's see the job. Okay, great lot of stuff. It's okay, so first one, that's the fuel filter. Engine oil filter. This one here should be, yeah, engine oil. Diff oil. This one here, I opened it earlier on. I'm pretty sure it's, that was. And we have the spanner for the Helix, or Haldex. We have the oil and the filter for the Heldex system, that's the four-wheel die system. We have front bushings for the wishbones. Uh, these are the front ball joints for the wishbones. We have top mounts, because both of mine are gone. And an air filter. So we're going to do a whole, fill, whole service on the TT. So there's so much to do and it's probably about minus two at the moment. It's absolutely freezing and there's no heating in the garage. So we're not going to do too much tonight, but I'm going to do all the easy jobs that are, that don't really require very much work. So I'm going to do the air filter first. Okay. So first job is to remove the screws. So there's one there and the one further up here and uh, that should open up the air box. Okay guys, so the way I've been tackling this is one screw here, one screw here, the plug and the clip. Undo them and we should be able to open it. And um, that's the air filter, it looks pretty clean actually. Well, it used to look kind of clean. Thankfully no dead mice or birds. <laughs> But, um, yep, yeah, it hasn't done a lot of mileage this car from the previous owners, but um, there is high mileage on the car, so we're going to give it a new filter anyway, at least then be another thing ticked off the list. Okay, so new filter, yeah, I suppose like the old filter actually wasn't very bad, it was actually probably quite clean, but um, I said since I'm going to be the owner of this car and I'm doing everything else, let's do a full job and let's have everything new and clean so um, no bugs in this one so okay and I've just after cleaning out all the air box there as well so that's that just making sure it sits down nice and evenly and um, yeah it looks pretty good okay time to reassemble and that's the first job done Okay, that's now the air filter finished. Now, on to the next job. Okay, next job is to drop the oil, and to do that, we have to go down into the pit underneath the car, and we have to drop this tray first. Okay, so I now have all the nuts and bolts all removed, and I think it's like there. I think what you do, yeah, I think you just shake it and it should drop out. Okay, now we're down. So that's the tray that goes underneath it. We can get rid of that and now have a look in at the oil filter. Okay, let's go in. Bit of moss. Um, right, find the oil filter. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's the oil filter. And there's all the cobwebs. So, yeah. <laughs> and there's a fair amount of cobwebs. Anyway, good thing I'm not afraid of spiders. Spiders are afraid of me. Okay, so. Okay, that's meant to be hand tight, but it's not. <laughs> Might need two hands for that one. So, let's see if I can. No, oil fill, oil drain plug. Uh, there we go. Oil drain plug. Okay, so let's get a pan underneath us, drain the oil, and see. I'd like to start the engine actually for a while and try to warm up the oil a bit, and then drain it. Lift, take out the filter and see how we go from there. Okay, so I've just had the engine running there. You can hear the after run pump still running. I think that's cooling the head. I've had it running for about, I don't know, five or ten minutes. It's um, still very cold here, so 
I don't think it made a huge difference, but it definitely did move the oil around a bit. So, let's uh, open up this and drain the oil. Let's see if I can do it now without getting oil on my hands. Okay, so after a good bit of work, I got the filter out. Absolutely awful job. You're only meant to hand tighten them. I don't know who put that in last, but that was not hand tightened in. So, okay, there's the filter that came out. Yeah, the end of it got crushed because I had no other way of getting it off. So let's hope that the new filter is exactly the same, otherwise I made a mistake. And of course it is. Both so, of them are correct. So the way you put a filter on is by hand tightening it, not whoever put that one on. That was ridiculously tight. Okay. Okay, new filter going in. And it goes in way off up there. Okay. Okay, not gonna be able to do this one-handed. Okay, and that's hand tightened back in. So I actually think the reason why originally it was so hard to get off is because everything is so cold at the moment that um, it needs a bit of heat to um, break the seal up here. So that's why it's actually really tight to get the filter off originally, but it's on nice and tight now with the new one. And uh, I filled it, not fully, but about halfway up, because otherwise you're gonna get oil everywhere. Uh, ignore that. <laughs> okay, so next step, get the drain plug back in. It's all drained and uh, fill it with oil. Okay, tighten that up and then we'll fill it with okay. oil. Now time to pour the oil. Booyah, first go. Okay, so it's really cold here at the moment. That's why the oil is not going out like honey. Uh, they were having our flow as well. But. Okay, so we have four litres in, so there's one litre left. And uh, about to pull out the dipstick and check it. Okay, it looks like we're halfway up the dipstick, or nearly half up the dipstick. So I know that it takes four and a half litres, so I'm going to put another half litre into it, check it again. Okay, I've just given the dipstick a wipe, and let's check it again. Where are we at now? A bit hard to see. I think we're just barely over the mark. Um, it actually looks like we're just there where my finger is. So we're just barely over the mark. And this is a tip that was taught to me by another senior mechanic, that if you half fill the oil filter, that means that you have half to refill. So when you're filling the dipstick, if you slightly overfill it, it's still okay because that overfilled mark has to go into the oil filter. So you don't want to run the oil filter totally empty, but there's no point totally filling it either because you'll end up with most of it back on the ground because they're so difficult to get in. So I'm going to give the engine a start, put the cap back in first, obviously. And uh, let it start, let it tick over for a little bit and um, then test it again. Because obviously the, the oil is slowly making its way down anyway. So we'll give it a check and see how we're doing. Okay, ran the car for about two minutes. After wiping the dipstick and we're going to check it now. I think we're bang on, exactly on the line. Brilliant. Another job done. Okay, now on to the next job. But before we do, please do subscribe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, ring the bell for notifications. Okay, so the next job I had planned was the fuel filter, but because it's at the very back, I can't be arsed turning the car around. So we're going to do the diff. So. This is the gearbox here, and we're going to change the differential uh, gear oil or transmission oil or whatever you want to call it. So um, that's the drain. So obviously we can drain it here, but how do you get oil back in? So that's the fill. So we're going to open the fill first. Because if you can't refill it, there's no point draining it. So that's a... Ugh, go in. Okay, I'm going to get a hammer and tap it. So that's a 14 mil hex on a socket. 
let it go. Okay, so after a bit of persuasion, we got it to fit. And it's now opening so we can afford to open it here. So that's going to be fill to level. So we have to drain it first. So where's the drain gone? This one's the drain. And we'll see how tight this one is. Okay, stay. <clears throat> okay. Another one opened. Brilliant. Okay. Let's drain this. Okay, so I drained it into a milk carton. It's about a 3 litre milk carton. And that looks like more than one litre. So I read that it was only one litre that was in the front diff and one litre in the back diff or 1.1 litres or something like that. And um, I only bought two litres so I think I might have to buy more than I might have to buy another litre. See that? There's, it came out perfect and then it decided to have two streams. So I've seen enough Ghostbuster movies you know you never cross the streams. <laughs> anyway I tried to put it underneath one and see you move it over to the other one. Yeah you're not going to get both of them together. No. Well, now you might, but up to this you wouldn't. Okay, I'll let that drain off. But uh, I just wanted to see how much oil was in it. And it seems like quite a lubricous oil, like, I wonder is it the right oil that's in it? So I have a 75W90, I think, oil to go back into, which is correct. And um, yeah, it's draining away anyway there, so. Okay, one stream now. Okay, yeah, so that's the drain plug out at the bottom and the one at the top I've taken out as well and they look identical. There's not there isn't a difference between the top and bottom. But um I'm kinda of surprised there's no magnet. Normally they have a magnet. And like you should be able then to see if there's any metal filings, but there's no magnet in this one at all. And I think Ed China when he was doing up his TT, he said the same thing that there's no magnet on it. So um I do actually have six gears, so I'm not too bad, but um yeah, it's just really odd. Okay, let this drain and uh, when it's fully, fully drained, we'll refill it again. Okay, so here we have the drain plug just here. We follow the gearbox around to the back. And this is a T10. So you open that. There's another part of the gearbox. It has a magnet on it. So, okay. I'm happy with that. Like, there's a little bit of metal filings, but like, there's no like massive chunks and like it's not like it's highly like covered in metal filings or anything like that and um maybe it does prove that someone has actually changed the oil so yeah happy with that so i'm gonna clean this and then refill with oil okay so it's all clean it's going back into the hole okay just having a look at the gearbox oil that came out it's fairly black looking stuff, so it definitely needed to be changed. But um, the good thing is I don't see any aluminium like floating around in it. Like there's probably like minute little tiny bits, but like it's not like loads and loads of metal shavings, just a tiny little bit. Um, the container probably wasn't that clean anyway to start with, so. You see large chunks, that's just paint and stuff that had been sitting in it. Yeah, okay, happy with that. Okay, that's brilliant. That's filled to level, so I'm just letting the excess just drain off, and uh, then I'll put in the bung. So guys, the total amount of oil used was about 2.6 litres. Okay guys, so I have the bung now done, and the fill done, and uh, we're just going to torque them now to 30 newtons. and that's now the gearbox finished okay guys we're now at the back of the car here's the rear diff that's the drain so let's find the fill first and it took me a while to actually figure out where it was it's there which makes no sense why would it be there so there's the all the rear suspension and right in the most awkward place is where they've put the Phil, so I have opened it and um, now I'm going to attempt to open the drain because you always open the fill first because if you can't refill it, there's no point draining it. Okay, like I'm still trying to figure out why did they put the drain right there and obviously the diff is probably used in other Volkswagens and, and uh, Audis as well but um, if they just had the drain up here where the CV joint is it would have made way more sense rather than 
in the back here because it's not even a straight line so that basically is the opposite of this side here so when you put your hex 17 in to remove it i can't get the camera in to get my fingers in as well but um yeah there's absolutely no room in there i might be able to get it just there uh, no i'm not able to even get it but um yeah it makes no sense why to put it there but anyway we're going to drain it and refill it with 75w90 Okay, I have that now draining. There's the sump plug. A small little bit of metal filings, but like nothing amazing or anything like that. So delighted with that. That means that it's very clean and um, everything should be okay inside it. Uh, yeah, that oil definitely needs to be changed. It was quite brown looking. Okay, and that's now the top one filled. So filtered level or filtered dribble. So that's what it's currently doing. So how do I get it in? Well I went off and got a really long flexible pipe and went to my veterinary shop and asked for the biggest syringe that they had with not a needle point but um, a dosing point so it's actually thicker than you'd put a needle on and uh, it was great because I got in I just about got the, the pipe into the hole squirted in, it took a lot of goes so it's about, I think it's a litre and a bit that goes in but uh, so I had a, a lot to go in but um, yeah, the syringe worked brilliantly. So anyway, finished now, so time to put the bung back in. Okay. Okay, so I get the bung back in. And uh, I'm gonna tighten this up now. Okay guys, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to tighten this into spec. So I think it's gonna be 30 Newtons, but that's not gonna happen. So it's just a matter of going, Ugh! Yeah, I think that's 30. So you can see there's absolutely no room in here at all. So I can't even get anything in because there's a big piece of metal in the way. Um, really awkward design, but um, you really just can't do it without one of these. So this is a 17 mil hex. The 14, the front is 14, the rear is 17. Down there is 17 as well, so. Okay, that's the gearbox now done, or the rear diff done, brilliant. So before we start, crack on with any more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Okay guys, so about to change the fuel filter. So I have one end already back in. Zip ties, of course, holding it on. Because, um, yeah. And uh, to get these on, or to get these off actually originally, there's a little clip, you push it in, and then you pull it back. You pull the whole black thing backwards, and that'll lift it off this bit here. Anyway, there's like a little cap or a little stopper. So it has to lift over, then slide off. So put them back on. Super easy, you just push on like that and get a good push down. And just like that, you hear that little click. And we're, yeah, we're all the way on. And a little, this is the little metal clip here. You push that in and you slide the whole thing back and it'll come off. And I have the new filter back on. I have the other end. Already done well, you can't see it, but it is on. And now just to tighten up the zip ties and then we're finished. Okay, that's the zip tie now back on. Or a cable tie. And um, now we're going to snip it off. <laughs> now it's only a matter of putting the whole cover back on. So I left one bolt back in. Uh, it slides. There's two tens either side. And then a clip at the very back. Okay, so next on the list is the Haldex oil and filter. So that's the filter. That's the cap. That's the oil. So it's not, it looks like silicone, but it, there's actually oil inside it. So I think what you do is cut the top off here, then jam that into the hole, and uh, find something like probably like this bar, and just push it in. Okay, so that's what the filter looks like. Or the cap that goes on the filter right so now i'm going to show you where the actual filter is so again tailpipe so we're at the back of the car you go underneath that's the gearbox that we changed or the differential that we changed last time and just in there you can see just the side of it well you can see just my fingers that's the very back of it 
and um, yeah, it's really, really awkward to get at. So thankfully, you can't, well, you can't do this, unfortunately, unless you buy the special tool. And you can see at the very top, it's actually chafered, so there's actually like a chamfer, or it's angled anyway. So we're going to attempt to get this in. So I've seen this done once. So I said I'd make my own video. So you go in, this is pointed now at the front of the car where the, the front wheels are. So you go in this side of it. And see that chamfer at the top that follows. So you get loads of angle. And we try to sneak it in and straighten it up. <laughs> this isn't going too well. Okay. Yeah, after just wiggling it there. Come on, focus. So you can see that's on. And then you go anti-clockwise and we'll wind it off. Okay, next is take a T5. And where's it gone? Down here. Right, and we're going to open the bung and drain the Haldex oil. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna let that drain now and um, I'm going to then refill it. Okay, and that's the old filter now out. And um, you can see the hole. That's a bit hard to see. You can see the hole that the filter came out of. So you undo it a little bit with the wrench until you, it's, you can still get the wrench away. Then you wind the rest of it out by hand. And I assume that's going to be the same way of getting the new filter in, in reverse order. Okay, so nearly finished draining. And I'm um, not really looking forward to putting the, all this oil back in. I've heard horror stories, so we'll find out how hard it is. So now I'm going to get the oil into the Haldex system. I have the bung and the nut ready to go. So I hope you can see all of that. Okay guys, so now I'm going to do the Haldex oil. So I have the Haldex oil here, bung here, and uh, you can use the end of the spanner. Okay, it's going in nice and easy, very quickly. It's a light oil. Okay, now the big thing. Can I get the nut back in? Okay. Okay. Didn't cross thread it or anything. Finished. So that's how you do the Haldex oil. And uh, yeah, not my favorite job at all. So there you have it guys, that's how you serve the TD. So I have all the oils and all the filters now done. So if you like these videos, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Support me in PayPal in the link below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.